what what makes um, storytelling ethical? Like, what are some of the things that you know through your project or the projects that you worked on um, speak to ethical storytelling? For people who don't understand what ethical storytelling is, maybe. I think when we think most of the time when people talk about like storytelling, they don't think about ethics. Mm -hmm. I think for most of the time storytelling has been used to educate, right? And the idea is that the fact that you're educating uh, overrides everything else, that uh, basically the end justifies the means. And as a result of that, that ethics have always taken a back seat. Uh, so ethics in terms of how are stories of minorities told, who is included, who's telling the story, is this story harmful? Is it harmful to the people I'm telling it to? Is it harmful to the people that I'm talking about? So thinking about all those elements and for me mainly when I talk about uh, ethical storytelling I'm really focusing on inclusion of diverse voices which have consistently been missing in, in storytelling and in documentation of work throughout whether you are looking at history or you are looking at human trafficking specifically I'll say that the sector specifically is special in the sense that survivors are not included in the process of storytelling. And when they're included, it's mainly around trauma. And I think because I'm also a trauma practitioner, I'm very conscious about how stories of trauma are told and what the boundaries are as far as ethics are concerned in ensuring that the people involved are safe. No, uh, I appreciate uh, the way Sophie have sort of taken us through all these um, like different angles of looking at uh, ethics. Now, I, mean, I I choose to look at ethics from uh, like the angle of power. It is all you know like power, how we play around with our powers, how we we rely on our, our powers to sort of uh, dehumanize others or shift that the, the narratives. Because uh, when you look at the survivors, at, at the end of the day, they are the most vulnerable people in here, but they're also like people who are holding power when it comes to their stories. So when we come in, we come into the picture of story, storytelling, in most cases, as Sophie said, for us, the researchers, we are looking at the, the, the end product. But ethics is all about like the entire process. So if you are a researcher, if you are a practitioner or you are an, an NGO, if you're interested in the process of storytelling, then you will be engaging with the ethics. But if you're focused on the final product, you know, this uh, small uh, uh, video of five minutes or, or 20 minutes, that's what you want, that's what you're aiming at. Then along the way, you may not be able to engage with the question of how do we ethically tell stories? So mm -hmm. me, when I look, I look, I look at uh, ethics from the point of view of power, you need to first check your power, you as a person, how much power do I have? Me as Alan, I have a lot of power, I have a lot of privileges. The fact that I have come all this way to listen to Chao's story, you know, how have, I, how, how have I been able to arrive at this point? And then how do I ensure that Chao and I, we can meet halfway? Both of us, you know, I can ensure that Chao remains with uh, her integrity as the survivor. Sorry, Chao, I'm using your name. Um, <laughs> so so at, at least, you know, uh, both of us, we are in this, uh, like, engagement together, but my power is not going to override the, you know, the survivor's power. Because the survivor is the knower of their experience. It's the knower of their world. They are giving you their time. So how do you ensure that their power is not overshadowed, is not over, you know, like silenced along the way? How do you ensure that it is not just their suffering? They are warned that you're going to sell in your product because there is more to that than, you know, just you capitalizing on what they have suffered and what they continue to suffer. So I think, yes, ethics is before, during, and after, like the process of storytelling. I, I wanted to I, <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Chao, in relation oh. to that. 
I think um, uh, what is this, Alan and I are really focused on the now. Like, and for me, the thing has always in insisting about inclusion in storytelling and having diverse voices. It's always been important for me because when I look at history, I see the voices that are missing. As someone who actually can, is looking at archiving, how important is ethics in archiving and the fact that, that we, history is being written now mm. and right. how do you see that correlation between yeah. like what we are trying to achieve now and how history would look like if we mm -hmm. were thinking about ethics i mean it's interesting that you both speak about ethics um sophie you mentioned inclusion and alan you spoke about ethics being a part of the entire process and for me as a historian or someone who works with archives, I have to apply that, um, is it retrospectively or regressively? You know, like I have to apply this backwards. And a lot of the time when you're looking at Sophie, as you're saying that there, there's a lot of gaps within the historical record. And these gaps are not even just data gaps, they're perspective gaps, you know, the empathy, there's no, when we look at, at a lot of what how we have come to acknowledge or even come to terms with um, historical slavery, a lot of it has been either from you know records written by Europeans, ledger records, archives and photographs taken or um, without consent, you know. And I think we also have to interrogate what it means for us to come to this understanding of the past purely through this perspective. You know, so as a historian, it's a very, it's a it's a very interesting thing to have to, especially being African, to have to look at the historical record as something that is inherently flawed. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't come to the historical record or to the photograph thinking that this is the canon, this is everything I need to know. I have to come to it knowing that it's probably ten percent. 5%, 20% of what is there and how, how do I make inferences about what is unsaid? You know, how do you listen to images? How do you observe discomfort in archives, in records? In, in It has to be a very inherent practice. And I know that uh, many African writers are looking at this question of archive and, and listening to images and bringing your empathy and your connectedness to the archive as opposed to an understanding that the archive was made for you or it was made to represent you. And in that way, I think we are, we are challenging, as you're saying, we're challenging the historical record as is, but in the gaps that we find, we are creating, I, I would say, new kind of archives, you know, through our interpretation, through um, our visualizations, through technology, 